Hi guys, Peter Tomasini from Classic Car Restoration again and today what we're going to film is a quite interesting shape to say the least and this particular shape here if you don't prepare for it and can read it properly it can bite you real hard. Okay so in a minute we're going to go on the paper pattern that I've made but I just want to show you what all this means. We start off with a green line and that is where the frame, the buck, is. That would mean is just from here down to the bottom there, it must be relatively flat. Not too full, but relatively flat that way. It's got a bit of shape that way, but it's relatively flat this way. This black circle here shows the funnel where most of the shape is. Okay? And then of course it comes down and we got a blend between the reverse here and this reverse here. The blue lines represent straight it's dead straight because as I mentioned to you before you can't have a return and immediately a bulbous shape it'll look funny so you got your reverse your straight part and then your funnel out again there's your reverse up the top and there's your reverse down here it's designed this card is designed in such way that by reversing this and stretching that it will match the door when the door is made Having said that, the reverse here just blends in. See these little lines? It just blends in a little bit. So there's your big reverse, and it blends in very, very lightly through here. And then from here, it's just a bulbous shape. This black line here represents the seal line. That needs to be straight to match the front and I'm gonna get a ruler and show you. As you can see here that's fairly straight through there and fairly flat too I might add. Now that must be like that because it needs to match with the front panel which I'm going to show you again. As you can see it matches the front wheel arch and I'm just gonna move it up and show you up as well. Okay, so what that means is that when you're looking from the front, the whole area here is parallel. It doesn't bulge out or too far in, etc. I'm going to show you the reverse up the top. There's when I hold it straight and then I'm going to pull it down. And you can see the reverse through there. And now here you can see the reverse and the bulbous shape together. You can clearly see, if I move my fingers, that here we've got a reverse. Okay, let me show you the reverse here with the, with the uh, yellow marker here. And I'm going to take it down and you can see that it gradually gets bigger and then goes smaller. So here we go up here. That's one, that's one. Then we go down here. Then we go down here, see how diminish? Then we go down here, then down here, and as you can see it gets smaller and smaller until it becomes a bulbous shape. There you are, right there. To make things more interesting and make sure that I get it right, because as I said to you before, if you haven't got the right equipment, and you think about it, this thing's gonna bite you hard because it's a real difficult panel. Not a difficult panel, but as I said before, interesting. So what I did, I made up this little, this little piece of aluminum here, which is, um, I bend it, and that gives me the length of the return and the start of the bulbous, because it's all to do with making it and then blending it. So I'm going to put that up here 
and you can see but otherwise this is not flat as you can see it is curved so we got that one and as you can see the two ends are now start to go away from the panel at this end as you can see that's because it's getting shallower and shallower and shallower okay so you need to have something like this now another thing that you do need is the an outside the outside um, profile uh, because you need to keep your eyes on where they are and check them at all time. Again, if you don't do that, it's going to bite. So, in a minute I'm going to show you all the profiles. Now, someone has said to me once, I can't remember where it was, that it's very difficult on a buck to make a panel because you can't see the bucks on the inside or blah, 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 blah. Well, you make outside patterns. You scribe them off the, uh, the buck and you make outside patterns. And I'm going to show you how we did this. For the ones that think that you can't see a buck and it's very hard, all you do, you make these. These are outside profiles. They're going from the buck here to the center line. And I can put that in there and you can see what I'm talking about. So that's number four and eight. I'm sorry, eight or seven then realistically all you need is possibly number three because then all you do once you've got seven and three and possibly zero you can then blend it in but let's put that on number three from the center line to the buck to the uh, to the buck there and you can see i can have that while i'm working on it and knowing very well that with a little bit of adjustment, it'll go in. Now, also, you need this pattern. And that gives you the reverse up the top. And as you can see, they numbered right there. Now, the paper here doesn't show it as much because it's flex a little bit flexible, but realistically, you would need to cut it because if you pull down, it's going to do all sorts of things. So if I just cut that, okay, you can now see that it's slowing down and gives you that straight piece there. If you don't cut it, it's going to bulge out. Now that's the reverse and of course here, there's a straight as I said to you before and then here as you can see, you need to shrink it. Can you see that? So we got our reverse, we got our straight piece and then we got our shrinks, okay, because you're coming around. And the paper here tells you everything you need to know. Now, it's up to you. You can use whatever you like. But I will strongly suggest you use paper and nothing else. Simply because if you use other means and you can't cut it and you can't shrink it, it doesn't tell you exactly where you need to be. Now, down here, as you can see, nothing's happening down here because that's straight. The reverse is down here, but this top here is straight, and then they start to go up. And I'll show you again with this. It's not this straight, but it's straight enough. So if I put that back there, as you can see here, that there's not much happening here, because it's, it's going straight and then going up. Down here, you can see that the paper is doing some funny things here, but again, if I was to cut it, it would then lay back, and you can clearly see there's a bit of stretching going on there. Okay, so we're going to cut it, 
and we're going to cut it. So now you can see that the straight panel and you can see the stretching through there. So realistically that's the shape. That's if I put a little bit of tape here. <coughs> If I put a little bit of tape there, there you are. You can clearly see the shape here. There's your straight point. Here we go. There's your straight part. Perhaps it needs another cut here, I'd say. Let me do that. The paper tells you exactly what you need to do. Okay, that's better. So now I'm going to put the tape down here. And you can see, and I got all the all the station mark. So while I'm doing the job, that'll be marked on the panel at one stage. There's no need to mark them immediately, but when you get about halfway through, you then start to put your, your profiles into the panel. Down here, as I show you on the other panel, there's your seal line. That just rolls under. And this is the part, again, the paper tells you that it's got to have a little bit of shape, but not too much, because you don't want that to go in there. You want it to go straight across, but it does need a little bit of shape this way. So if I put my hand behind the paper here, like so, you can see that it needs a bit of shape that way, but again, fairly straight across there. Not that straight, but fairly straight. Okay, now that we got all this, we cover the panel, we cover the stretching, we cover the shrinking. You can see here. Okay, we cover the station, we cover the buck. I'm gonna take the paper off and show you the buck. And then we're gonna go onto the panel itself and we start doing some work on it. And you can see the way I, I do that, and that goes for uh, a Jaguar mudguard, obviously a little bit deeper, same principle. There's no return here on a Jag mudguard or an Austin Healy, but the principle there is the same. A lot deeper, but the same. On a Jag and Austin Healy, you've got no return here, but it's bulbous, comes up, real comes up high and goes into the bulbous, but the principle is the same. There's also a blend on both, Austin Healy and Jag, there's a blend from the return here, coming down and going up, and the same story goes. The blend, you need to be able to do the blend properly. Here's the, uh, I took the pattern off, and here's the buck. Now, if you're not familiar with shapes, and you are learning, what I suggest you do is the old aluminium foil. So what do you do? You do this. Just to give you an idea in your mind what needs to be done, you can use a little bit of this. Especially, I mean, you know, you don't need one here, obviously, because it's a bulbous shape, but if you wanted to find out what the hell's going on and have it in your mind, what the sheet has got to do, I can put that in there. And you can clearly see, I mean, you can wrap that around there and you can see what it needs to be done. You can see it clearly that there's, that's pushed in there's a straight piece here and then it takes off to the bulbous. I've done that here on this one. I'll show you it on this return, which is, uh, I wasn't quite sure, even though I watched pictures, um, went by photos, I wasn't quite sure what the situation was here, so that's all I did. I just put a little bit of foil there. Okay, and we got, and I knew we had the return here. You can look at it both ways. There's a return there. Okay, there's your return here, and there's your bulbous shape here. Like so. 
I mean, it's not a, an exact thing, but it gives you an idea. You then know that at least the returns come through here. Look, see that? The bulbous comes through here. This is all excess metal that you can cut off later. And then, of course, it tells you also where the return blends because, again, this panel is coming that way and it gives you an indication where the blend is. And then, of course, while you're making it, you can adjust it. If you get it wrong, there's nothing wrong with putting a sandbag and tap it back out, remark it, and work on it. But you'll see what I mean a little bit better when, when we actually start doing the panel. So a little bit of foil, you can tape it down. Here we go. Can you see that? Now I could probably show you if I can get a pen. There we go. What I mean by, let me just show you something quickly. If I stop that from coming down, and uh, oops, let me put that back on. Uh, okay, if I can just stop it, here we go. Here's your bulbous shape, and it tells you immediately that down here. We got a return shape. There we go. See that? And you can you can do that, make up a pattern by straightening it out, cut up a bit of board and mark it just to start you off. Just to start you off. If you haven't done it before. And there's your see what I mean? And then it tells you here, around here, it also tells you that it's there's a blend here somewhere. And then of course it goes straight down. So this could help if you need to get your mind in the right direction. I now laved the paper pattern on top of a piece of or, or the blank. And the only thing I've done on the blank at the moment is just quickly, quickly block it out a little bit here so that you can see a lot better this way. Um, I just put some shape in there I've got some excess material there which I'm going to use to bend it and then eventually I will cut that material off. But I've got all the information I need. It tells me do not go and put too much shape below here. There's your buck. There's your, the buck that I showed you. Now I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what I mean. That's this part here. You cannot go below there and have that shape. You must stop the shape here and blend it into that. Because from there down, as I mentioned before, it's only a little bit round and almost straight that way. Now, now we've got all the station and we've got our stretch material through there. And eventually, not now, but eventually I'm gonna mark all that. All these, all these lines here. Our funnel, our funnel through here, our straight part there. Uh, you probably didn't see the blue line before on the panel, but you can clearly see it now. That's your straight part. And our funnel through here. And our seal line. This is just a little bit of shape and then bend it. Because if you don't put shape in there, when you bend it, it'll go hollow. So realistically, that's all you need to know. That's all the information you want. I'm, I'd say it again, eventually I will put these details onto the panel, but not, not, not yet, it's too early. I'm gonna take the uh, pattern off and show you the actual blank. And as I said before, all I did is a little bit of blocking, a little bit of shrinking through there, which I might have to change, but I put enough shape so the paper lays nice for you, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And there's your panel, there's your shape. Now it's an interesting shape, as I said before, because you need to you need to have you need to think about it. You can afford to make some mistakes, and you can fix them. For instance, 
if you've got too much shape here, you have to open up that edge and let it out and then bend it to check if it comes up. Because don't remember, don't forget, I'm sorry, that when you make a return and you bend it, it comes up. So realistically, if you leave that area alone and start the return, the blender return through here, when you bend it over this pipe here, it'll come up and come up flat. I'll say it again, return, when you bend them, they pop back up. So if you start the return back here, even though it shows here that it's flat, that will be flat, not bulbous. And then from there, you come along and put your bulbous shape. And it's all to do in this area here, the blending, all here. The blend of that return, the blend of this return, and the bulbous shape. So if you can manage all of that, all the, uh, if you can manage the, the blend in this area, you're then on the right track. As you can see, I've done a little bit of blocking through here. Not much, just a little bit, a little bit of shrinking. We, I can change that at any time. We, I know for a fact that we got the straight here. And again, later on, later on, I'm going to literally mark them properly. And we got our return here. And we got our little blend there. This just comes over and we got our big return through here, which at the moment is still flat. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the hammer, not the wheelie machine, for a couple of reasons. It's quicker. Uh, I can always uh, put the wheelie machine after and, and, and finish it off. I'm not going to touch that at all. That stays, that stays as it is, that stays raw. I'm not going to touch that yet. I'm just going to put a bit of shape here. I'm going on the hammer, putting the shape, name very well, there's somewhere in here, somewhere in here. And again, I'll, I'll mark it better later, because I can change it. I can change things. I'm going to put a bit of shape through here, and try to blend it in as much as possible through there, and then later on, I'm going to stretch it through here. So let's start, let's start the process, eh? Okay, I've got my hammer set up. Uh, I'll adjust it in a minute, I'll just see how I go. I'm going to put some shape through here with the hammer, as I said it's a lot quicker, self-supported, I don't have to break my back half of the wheel. And uh, what you see me doing is keeping away from the return, putting some shape up there and very lightly, very, very, very lightly blend it in into the blue marks if you remember on the pattern. And if I happen to go too far, I'll just let it out. Okay, so you'll probably hear the compressor going on every now and then. So I won't do any talking over the compressor and possibly explain what I've done when the compressor switches off. So here we go. As you can see, I'm also stretching the edge because what's going to happen if you don't stretch the edge as well and you put the bulbous shape here, the panel when it's bent, it's going to hook up too much. So you need to shape it and stretch the edge as well, this edge here. Don't shrink it, whatever you do, stretch it. 
Because again, when it's closed, if you don't stretch that edge, the actual panel will look coming in. Okay. I'll take the oil off it. All right. You saw me stretching this edge and start to get a little bit of roundness here. Not as much stretching here as I said, a bit of stretching through there. Then eventually I'll with the English wheel, I'll, I'll come out. I've done hardly any, hardly any beating through here, but I've concentrated on this part of the return on the blend, and I've concentrated on that. Put a bit of shape through here. If I need more, I'm going to block it. I've got a blocking hammer in there, but I'm going to bend it now and see what we need to do. Uh, one thing that you must understand is, it goes back to what I said many, many times. The panel needs to be somewhere near it, 
resembling the car. If you got that bend any other way, in a U shape or whatever, well, <laughs> where are we beating? What are we doing? So, <coughs> excuse me, so the idea of closing it too early or have it roll like a barrel, it ain't gonna work because if you close it too early, you then can put the hammer in or the wheel for that matter. You need to use the wider low anvils or the wider die and close it all the time. Bend it, check it, put it on the car, see what it needs to do, mark it, reopen it and go back on the machine. So now as I said I'm going to bend it and see what I've got. You need to do this a little bit at a time uh, because if you rush it and put the shape in the wrong spot it just means a lot more wood for you. So let me bend it a little bit and see what we got. Okay, let me see, let me show you what's happening. You can see the similarity. Now obviously I've got to do a bit of shrinking there, but it's too early yet, I won't do it, but possibly a bit of shrinking there. This is our straight piece, this is our bulbous shape. I already shrunk it there as I said to you before. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this to the other side and show you already the similarity. Okay, it's rough, I know, but as you can see, a bit of more planishing, obviously, I mean, well, a bit more work, and uh, a little bit of letting out here, a little bit through here, check that top edge with our profile, with our pattern, that's very important, but look, still a straight panel there, still straight, not bulbous. We already got some reverse in there. I'm going to put that in there and show you. Already, I haven't touched that yet. See that? We got some reverse and we got some bulbous. And now I'm going to put it on the back on the other side and see where we're at. Okay, let's have a look, eh? Here we are. I spend <laughs> 10 minutes on this so far and look. Have a look at that. Okay, we've got to bend it, we've got to shape it, we've got to put more shape, yes, but that's the start. And I just want to check something, see how far away I am from the actual top because that's important as I said. So I'm going to grab that. And again, I've got no, I haven't got the station marked in yet. The station are not marked in, as you know. But let's see. I'm going by D station. Let's see where we're at. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Look at that. Just with a bit of hammering, very little shrinking, and a little bit of know-how, I think. Have a look at that. I can bend it here, but I need to shape it a little bit more. But that, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, look at that. We're on the right track. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do, I can see a little hollow coming through here. So I'm going to just touch it there, just a little bit. 
you don't want that to go too far, too hollow, because then it's a pain trying to get it up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little bit of shape here where I can see the hollow, just a little bit. Then I'm going to change the hammer to an English wheel, and I'm going to show you how I release the, the return. I already stretched the edge, so I'm moving all that metal out. I'm going into the, uh, into the, uh, into the straight, and it's obvious that I can't finish this panel because there's probably another good day's work in this. A good day. But the principle of this exercise is to show you how it's done, how you work it out, what you do, the pattern you must have, the profiles you must have, the overall shape, and how you, you do things like this. There's going to be time where, oops, I've got too much shape, so don't panic, open up an edge and let it out. And I'll show you the letting out that I'm talking about on the English wheel now. But I need to change that over. Now, I'm going to change that wheel over in full time. It should take no more than two and a half to three minutes to change into a wheel and then finish it off in a wheel. Having said that, you can actually open it up and finish it all off on the hammer, but because of the return, I, I feel more comfortable to let it out with the, with the English wheel. Uh, the hammer could put some, some nasty mark on it that you can still get out, but the less work you want to do, you want to do less work as possible. But even though I've used the hammer and a blocking hammer of that, uh, and I'm going to show you, before I do it actually, I'm going to show you a little bit of blocking through here as well, because that needs to come over a little bit more. Most of the shape is here. Most of the shape is here. So I'm going to put a little bit of blocking here, turn this edge over a little bit, and stretch it if I have to, or shrink it, whatever needs to be done. And how do I know? I just put it on the buck. The buck tells me what it needs to be done, or I look at the pattern. Very simple. So, recapture. Put a little bit of shape here with a hammer. Do a little bit of blocking here with the other hammer. Change the hammer to a wheel and get it, get it started, get it a little bit smooth so you can see what's going on.
Beautiful. Okay, now next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open it all up, change the, the other hammer to an English wheel, and I start smoothing things off. I get it to a point where it sits on the, sits on the buck fairly well, and then we call it a day, because as I said, to finish this off, you're probably looking at a good not eight hours. So you're looking at a day, a day and a half to make this panel. Um, I still got to roll the bottom, but that'll become later. I will get it to a point where I can start marking, put a pattern on and mark the, uh, the, uh, the profile so we can check. Because at the moment it's sort of, it'll be blind, but once I put the marking on, but everything, everything is looking like it should. Top, further, going around, flatter through here, flatter through there, return, we're going to do that in a minute, adjust all that, adjust all this, do a bit of wheeling there and let that out and possibly do a little bit of wheeling at the bottom ready to bend it. And as you can see, I'll probably just bend that a little bit and do a little bit of planishing, probably do it on the wheel or on the hammer, see how we go. But everything, even this, the wheel arch, it's the same or similar. Once this is bent around, similar to what it's supposed to look like. A little bit of bending will bring this in. It'll also straighten as well. So it's, it's stick for tack, really. Um, it, it's, a, it's a matter of looking at it, study it, keep putting it on the back, keep putting the profiles on, because otherwise you're working blind. And if you're working blind, you could be anywhere. Okay, so let's uh, change the wheel now. As I said, I'm going to do it in real time. It should not take too long. And we go from there. <laughs> 